the fifth kind. Click on the links in the description to watch the full video. The Edo people of southern Nigeria and Benin tell a story from the dawn of time. In it, the sons of Osanabua arrive on planet Earth. They are beings who arrive from outer space to a planet that is entirely covered by water. Their task is to terraform it. After they have cleared the waters from the higher ground, their leader and father, Osanabua, appears in the sky and descends from what appears to be a chain stretching as far as the eye can see into the heavens. Osanabua then delegates to his sons all the subtle works of terraforming the planet ready for human society. There are a number of things that are really interesting about the Edo story of creation. And the first is that planet Earth already exists before any of the so-called work of creation. It exists, but is flooded with water. And that is a detail that recurs in ancestral narratives all around the world. We then have the motif of the higher beings, the sky beings, coming down from the heavens. And a visual description of what that looked like when their leader, Osanabua, arrived on what looked like a chain stretching into the heavens. Now, clearly, the tellers of this story are reaching for a metaphor at that point. They're trying to describe what they saw in the terms of the technology that they had. So, what was it they were seeing? An ancient Filipino narrative of creation speaks of the arrival of Tagalog, a giant bird who hovers hawk-like over the flooded waters of the planet. Tagalog then creates vortices of wind which pull the waters away from the higher ground to create the islands. And so the work of terraforming begins. This aspect of the use of vortices of wind to clear land on a prehistoric planet Earth repeats in various narratives around the world, and not least of all, the Sumerian stories, those told on the ancient cuneiforms of the Mesopotamian cultures of Sumeria, Babylonia, Arcadia, and Assyria. And when we read the Sumerian account, again, we've got the descent of beings from the heavens to planet Earth, to a planet Earth that is flooded. And the first thing they have to do is the separation of the waters, separate fresh water from salt water if they're going to nurture life on Earth, and the separation of land from water. Some technology has to be used to say to the sea, thus far and no further. And once again, we've got vortices of wind doing the work, the four winds of the Sumerian account. Is the same visual memory being told from culture to culture? And if it is, who were the eyewitnesses who recalled this ancient visitation? Francisco Jimenez was the Dominican priest who in the very early 1700s translated an ancient Quiche text which had been entrusted to him. It was the Mayan creation narrative. And it spoke of the arrival of beings from the heavens to a flooded planet Earth once again, and it's flooded and shrouded in darkness. And those who arrive hover above the waters, we're told hover above the waters and hold discussions as to how they're going to nurture life on Earth, botanical life, and then zoological life, and then intelligent life with which they can work. What the text leaves open is the question of what they are hovering in. 
But if we're willing to read these ancient mythologies alongside each other, it's actually the Bible that introduces the theme of technology and explains what these beings arrived in when they hovered over the prehistoric waters. In the book of Genesis, we're told that the Elohim, the powerful ones, arrive over the dark flood waters of the planet in a ruach. The word ruach is popularly translated as the Spirit of God, and in later texts in the Bible, it appears to be used in that way. In its first mention in Genesis, the text specifies that the ruach was hovering. The word for hovering, melahefet, is the word the Bible uses to describe how birds of prey hover in the sky, appearing to float in the air without moving their wings. This is what the powerful one's ruach was doing. It was hovering in the sky without moving any wings. The Filipino narrative speaks about Tagalog, the hawk, hovering over the waters and with its wings creating vortices of wind to clear dry land. And so there's a really interesting note here in Genesis that talks about this ruah, which is hovering like a hawk. I wonder if there's a connection there. There is another connection in the word itself. The fifth kind. Click on the links in the description to watch the full video. Author and researcher Paul Wallace probes the world's ancient mythologies for clues about the origins of the human race and has published several books in the field of mysticism and spirituality. In the last decade, his work has probed the world's ancient mythologies for the insights they hold on our origins as a species and our potential as human beings. Paul's work in church ministry has included training pastors in the interpretation of biblical texts, working as a troubleshooter for communities of faith, and serving as an archdeacon in the Anglican Church in Australia. His background as a senior churchman makes it all the more surprising that Paul's latest book argues that human origins lie in our prehistoric contact with extraterrestrial species. Go to www.paulanthonywallace.com for information about Paul and his books.